as a struggle for parliamentary majority continues following the declaration of uh, the four seats vacant by Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, Abbas Sumana Kifobagu. Many are calling on President Kofuado to intervene to bring truths to the House. Is this a worthy call? And we seek expert analysis and, and views on this matter. But there's some latest coming through um, on this particular issue, which we're going to be getting into shortly. But uh, the f former majority leader and MP for the Swami constituency, Osechi Mensa Bonsu, we're going to hear from him shortly. Um, when my colleague Evelyn Tema spoke to him, he's indicated that the speaker was right in adjourning the House a little over almost a week ago, that's last week, Tuesday. But then again, he was expecting something more. Take a look. The petition that came from Haruna, uh, I understand, was lodged with the Speaker. Now, by our standing orders, if a petition is lodged, the member shepherding the petition will be given space to articulate or give vent to the petition. He gives it to the speaker, and the speaker, on account of that, will provide space to that member to articulate the content of the petition. Thereafter, the speaker then uh, refers the petition to the petitions committee to study and report to parliament. After the report is submitted, then the House could uh, discuss it, interrogate it, or debate it, and swim from which, if it becomes necessary and the Speaker has to give a, a ruling, perhaps that could be done, or a directive that could be done. It's not being ventilated on the floor of the House. He commended the Speaker for adjourning the House on the day. We saw uh, some pedestrianism creeping into Parliament. And so what he did cured the mischief of the house degenerating into something else. So on that score, and I also looked at his countenance, uh, I, I agreed with the adjournment. I thought that the adjournment was going to be perhaps for the day, and then maybe invite the leadership to further discuss the way forward. That's such a mess of also there, but there's some latest coming through a developing story right now fresh on the plate here on ghana tonight lawyers of the speaker of parliament right on about Alban sumana kinsford bagman have filed processes at the supreme court seeking to set aside the supreme court's orders which suspended the execution of the speaker's ruling declaring those four seats vacant my colleague dennis Paveri wadam esquire has been looking through the documents that we have right now here on ghana tonight came through not too long ago what are the speaker's lawyers saying? Well, so the speaker is in court through his lawyers and he's seeking to, if you like, overturn that particular order from the Supreme Court which suspended his ruling that um, vacated those four MPs. So the prayer of the speaker is pretty simple, that he mm -hmm. wants that the, uh, the order of the Supreme Court be set aside and that the processes and the proceedings in the Supreme Court in this suit be set aside. He also wants that the order be vacated. And this order is in respect of the order that was dated 18th of October 2024. You remember this order that was made by the Supreme Court to the effect that the, the ruling of the Speaker, which uh, vacated the four seats in Parliament, be suspended. Mm -hmm. The order that the MPs, the, four, the said four MPs be recognized. So those are the orders that the Speaker is um, asking the Supreme Court to set aside. Now, what are the grounds? The speaker is simply saying that, that by the rate which the plaintiff had purportedly invoked the court's original jurisdiction as incompetent, mm. he makes the argument that the process or the procedure by which the plaintiff, in this case, Afenio Makin, came right. to court was not proper and to that extent is incompetent. He also says that the court had no jurisdiction to entertain the, the matter before it because he argues that this is entirely a question as to the, the election of an MP or as to whether the seat is vacant or not, he contends that this is for the High Court to do. Mm -hmm. And that if the High Court, in doing so, comes to a point where they think there's the need for interpretation, at that point they could refer the matter to the Supreme Court. 
But as it was in the case, he makes the argument that the Supreme Court did not have jurisdiction to even entertain the matter in the first place. He also continues by saying that the court has no jurisdiction to stay execution of a ruling of the Speaker of the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. On this call, he makes the argument about separation of powers to say that even though the Supreme Court has the power to, to stay execution of rulings, that does not extend to such rulings that have been made by a Speaker of Parliament mm. and that the Constitution clearly defines the kind of orders that the Supreme Court can stay execution on. He makes the case that this is not one of those. For that reason, the Supreme Court does not have the, the, the jurisdiction to stay the execution of that. He also makes the case that the processes and proceedings in the suit, the suits were filed and prosecuted in breach of the rules of natural justice. We all know that this was an ex parte motion. What it means is that Afenio Makin went to court without recourse to the speaker. He was granted that particular relief. It, the argument made here is that they ought to have been heard. Mm. Then I there's see. also the other ground, that the orders of the courts dated 18th October were made in breach of the... We've seen this already. And that the orders dated 18th October were made in breach of the rules of... Um, the rules of law and procedure mm -hmm. which regulates the court's proceedings and orders. This, when you look at the larger extent of the explanation given here, yes. it, makes process, it makes reference to how even the speaker ought to have been served. Right. It makes references to the, the, the immunity that members of parliament and the speaker have in respect of Article 117 and 118, mm. as well as an agreement that had been reached between the chief, the judicial um, service. Essentially the chief justice. The chief really. justice and then the speaker, the speaker of parliament. Where they agreed that members of parliament should be served only on Mondays. Mm. There's a document to that effect that we have seen that That's in right. fact the speaker had as of 18th of October had written back to the registrar of the Supreme Court to reject service of the rate that was served on him. Mm. So basically, the speaker is seeking to set aside this particular order which um, sought to suspend the ruling that the speaker made on the, on the, on, on the, on the matter that relates to the seats of the four MPs who are now um, deemed to have vacated their seats. So essentially, the speaker is questioning the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in entertaining a Fenimarkin suit? Yes. They shouldn't have even paid attention They shouldn't to have entertained in the first place. It's even questioning the process itself to say that, look, the rate that, the rate that came before you was incompetent for you to have entertained it because the rules of court have a specific, a specific way by which it should come. It makes the argument that this particular rate did not follow that particular procedure. So in the first place, it ought not to have been detained. And finally, in concluding this, mm. there was something interesting that the lawyers of the speaker said, that ordinarily with this kind of process, they could have come ex party. Right. But they, they, they think that, <laughs> no, they don't want to do ex party. Yeah. The parties involved should be served. They should be ordered to come to court for the hearing. And he has yeah. gone ahead to issue uh, hearing notices. What it means is that Wednesday, come Wednesday, this matter will be heard. You mean the as, day after tomorrow? The day after tomorrow. This matter is we'll going to be. We'll see whether the Supreme Court will set aside the order or to vacate its orders or not. The coming days are going to be interesting. It's very interesting indeed. And, and as simple as you put it, and clear in understanding, Dennis Barberi with them there. We're going to be having some two uh, persons um, join us for this conversation. But uh, Jose Usu, who is the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, has also been speaking about this. And let's hear him briefly. I'll be joined by my two guests right now. Take a look. It's a reflection of the politics of today, of the things that we place emphasis on, of things that, in my view, should be in the background, mm. of things that do not add any value to our work as MPs. I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. Mm. I think that those are not the things that should take the front stage when we're discussing Parliament. Mm. And you're disappointed, as in it doesn't matter who is on the majority side and who is not? It does. It does. But why are we um, behaving as we're doing when in the past, in the previous three parliaments I've been in, such matters are discussed in, indoors, at the leadership level? Mm. How is now playing out in the open? with whipping members to be agitated and showing off their machoism. What, will that, what, what value does that serve? What or who could be responsible for that? I'm not interested in what or who. It is reflecting badly on Parliament. Mm. What we should do. As for having controversy, it has always been with Parliament. The reason Parliament 
is called parliament because they're a reflection of the various shades of ideas mm -hmm. in the country. And it is expected, it is natural that members of parliament will often disagree. It's what we see today, uh, a failure on leadership or off leadership. Well, I do not intend to make any value judgment on leadership, but for me, we are moving away from the values of parliament, how parliament had run over the years. Um, we are demonstrating the worst part of us. Even in the past, there have always been significant differences between the minority and the majority. It is this time that we have almost, almost equal members. Well, let's bring in two people on, on this. Now, Dr. Rashid Draman, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Martin Pebu is a private legal practitioner, so he's going to be joining us in a bit. Dr. Rashid Draman, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening. So th that's the latest right now with this uh, standoff we have in Parliament. The Speaker has written back to the Supreme Court questioning essentially its jurisdiction and even entertaining this suit by Afenio Markin. And in the next two days, it's just the next 48 hours to watch again, is it not? Yes, indeed, Alfred. And um, if, <laughs> if care is not taken, uh, this is the running battle that we are going to see between now and the end of the eighth parliament, where you know legal issues after legal issues would define the last chapter of this eighth parliament, which is quite unfortunate. And uh, I just had the uh, right honourable Joe was to the first deputy speaker, and. I mean, that is a view that I share, and I think that I've said this several times on your network, that this matter is not a legal matter. That the reason why we have the 275 people representing us is for them to go and sit down and talk. And that, <laughs> I mean, there will be many times when things are difficult and when things are difficult, that's when they have to show leadership. But what we see these days is the least kind of uh, difficulty. Then people run to the court for uh, interpretation. And, you know, like I said before, what this does is that it only weakens the hand of parliament which is already the weakest link in our democratic arrangement. The executive, as we know, is so powerful. I mean, everybody's calling for a review of the constitution to reduce the powers of the executive. Uh, now we are seeing a judiciary that is also very powerful. I mean, if you, if what we are hearing from the right honorable speaker uh, right now, all the documents that you read that are before the court questioning you know why the supreme court is getting involved in this when it doesn't lie in the bosom of the court i mean it's uh, for another level and so alfred when i sit down and think about all these apart from you know the fact that i repeat what i have said several times mm. this matter requires a political solution a political solution that that must be initiated by who? There's been proposals that the president should step into this matter to to call both the speaker and the chief justice, or in fact, the MPP and the NDC caucus leadership. When, what approach, what route should this intervention take? In what form, essentially? Well, I think, uh, you know, the, the speaker, the chief justice, the president, I think need to have a conversation, maybe at the first instance, and then eventually 
involving the leadership of the two parties. Um, you know, we can run away from this for as long as we want. Um, you know, if this political solution is not found, we are going to end up with a situation where no work can be done in parliament before December 7. And I think I repeat this because, you know, if we want to use the, the legal approach, after one failed suit, another is going to emerge and we are going to see an octopus of suits, if I can put it that way, that now becomes something that the courts cannot handle. Um, and Alfred, the more I think about our constitutional arrangement and the separation of powers, which the Right Honorable Speaker made reference to, the more I ask myself a lot of questions. You know, in the democratic architecture that we have, mm. the courts have powers to declare what the executive or the legislature does unconstitutional. Um, the president or the executive has the power to veto or to uh, refuse um, with reasons what comes from parliament, mostly if bills are passed. Um, parliament can impeach the president or censure his ministers or impeach them. And so we saw an attempt recently on the former finance minister. But Alfred, the fundamental question is who checks the courts? Who checks the courts? And we cannot assume that the courts are perfect. We cannot assume that they are human beings. Um, so that when we say whatever the Supreme Court says is final, mm -hmm. Uh, well, that's a matter of law, but I, as, as a student of politics, I'm just scratching my head and asking myself these questions. Mm -hmm. So how about when the court, when the Supreme Court is wrong? Hmm. How about when the, the, well, when the High Court is wrong uh, and, you know, it passes judgment that maybe it's, it's no challenge and nobody takes it up maybe to the Supreme Court. I mean, we can't, we can't assume that these people are infallible. So I think there is, there is some, um, maybe the lawyers might have to think about this. Right. But for me, I, I get, I get quite, quite worried. And I think the worry is not very much on the side of the courts. The worry is very much on the side of our parliamentarians. I see. Um, well, uh, and it's at the point that you, you call in the, the lawyers and to answer that question that you asked. So I'm, I'm going to welcome Martin Pebo right now. He's joining us. Uh, he's a private legal practitioner, one of the foremost human rights lawyers we have in this country. Lawyer Martin Pebo, good evening. Thank you for joining us on Ghana tonight. I can't see. Yeah. Well, so the latest, and I'm sure you've seen all the court documents right now. The Speaker of Parliament's lawyers have filed the processes urging the Supreme Court to set aside um, its orders, which stopped the declaration of the four seats uh, being vacant from coming into force. Essentially, the lawyers of the, of, of the Speaker questioning the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and even entertaining this matter. This is one that you, you predicted, I, I recall. Yes, yes, that normally uh, the right thing to do in these circumstances would be to go back to the court, uh, to ask the court to set aside the orders. Except right now, the other side to consider is that, is the court willing to eat humble pie? That's a great question to be answered. Is the Supreme Court willing to eat humble pie. Because so I can say, I tell you, um, applying to the court is one thing. The court admitting that it was an error 
it's a different kettle of fish. So that's that one that we, I mean, nobody can say with certainty. Unless, of course, they themselves see the turmoil they've thrown the country into, they think that, okay, they'll put their egos aside and do the needful fine. But often in Ghana, it's not something that's easy to do. You remember how when the Kufuadu threw out into this economic uh, creator, we called and called upon him to admit and accept responsibility. You see, it never came. They rather kept blaming Russia and Ukraine, Russia and Ukraine. Then everybody got tired after we had all shouted ourselves hoarse. Then one day, in a very lame and banal manner, he said he will accept responsibility after the horses had bolted. So that's the key thing. Because Mr. Council, let me tell you, in, mm -hmm. in, in the law, using the Constitution and the Supreme Court decisions of Ghana and other countries, there is equal opportunity to eat humble pie as there is to double down or dig in their heels. Yes. As for the law, that's the way it is. Depending on which perspective you are coming from, right. you will get sufficient uh, language and other cases to back you. So my point is that we can't say with certainty, except maybe perhaps with the consultations that Bagbin said they were being behind the scenes. Maybe if they reach an agreement that, okay, yes, uh, right just go back to the court and things will be made easier, sure. But trust me, it's a big hurdle for the court mm. to eat humble pie like this, especially in the manner in which the court has embarrassed the nation with all the turmoil. But it will be the right thing for them to do because once they've caused so much havoc, right. they should be ready to pay the price. Well, we'll see. In the next... 48 hours. In fact, the court is set to hear this matter on Wednesday. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely will be connecting again. Uh, Martin Pueblo, appreciate your time. Thank you so much, counsel. Also to you, uh, Dr. Rashid Draman, thank you so much for talking to us on this matter. We'll wait to see how the next 48 hours will look like. Uh, Dr. Rashid Draman, executive director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Also, Martin Pueblo is private legal practitioner joining us.